Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney here at the r, &R Law Group in the always beautiful and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're talking about the CNN meltdown. It's been ongoing for a few days. We remember a couple days ago, a lot of CNN anchors woke up and they had some very interesting news. The boss, the CEO, president extraordinaire, the man that has been leading CNN over the last several decades has been uh, gone. He's out. He said, I got to go. Sorry. Had an inappropriate relationship. Don't want to talk about it. And I'll see you later. And so he sort of skedaddled on out of there. Didn't even have an exit plan or anything. And so we're learning a little bit more about what took place because he's saying this all involved this consensual relationship where he's divorced and she's divorced. And it's a pretty normal thing not even a big deal and so the whole story the thesis was that they didn't disclose it oh to his boss and so that's what justifies the expulsion and so you know we live in a world where we've seen some pretty you know horrendous things we lived through Harvey Weinstein we've heard about you know the Louis CK stuff we've we've been through a lot of this and this doesn't sound like those others this sounds like two people probably having consensual sex in the missionary position with the lights off. Not even interesting. So why are they so bent out of shape over there at CNN? And so everybody has been asking themselves this. Turns out there's more to the story. Indication that maybe this all involved Governor Andrew Cuomo and, of course, Chris Cuomo, the former CNN anchor, allegedly connecting the dots, sort of uh, coaching Andrew Cuomo, through a lot of the press conferences that we heard a lot about a couple, uh, well, about a year ago in 2020. And so we're going to go through this and sort of connect the dots. We're going to listen and in as Jake Tapper reveals the news to all of America in compartment, uh, in, in uh, joined by Brian Stelter. We're going to listen and learn a little bit more about who Allison Golist is, because Allison Golist is one of the, uh, is actually the the woman who's involved in this, and it sounds like she's going to be staying at CNN. So we've got some interesting stuff. We're going to look at what some of the CNN commentators have to say about this because they're upset about this. They're saying, these two people were like little lovebirds. Why are we breaking this up? It's like a Shakespearean play. This is, this is horrendous. And then, of course, we're going to look at what the rest of the media has to say because the media is... Well, some of them are upset about it, but some of them are pretty gleeful about this. Over on Fox News, they're pretty excited about this. They've got big smiles on their face. They like to spike the football. Schadenfreude, Schadenfreude, you know, however you want to say that word, is uh, certainly going around throughout the media circles today. And so we're going to go through this in a lot of detail. There was a leaked meeting, a leaked recording that from a meeting that took place it, at CNN headquarters with everybody. Jake Tapper was there, Dana Bash, Gloria Borger, KC Hunt, Pamela Brown, Caitlin Collins. I don't know who any of these people are because I don't watch CNN, but they were all there. And apparently they're all big uh, names over there at CNN. And so there was this meeting where the new CEO, the new guy in charge, Jason Kilar, he came out and he was having a conversation with them. They asked him some pretty hard questions. And so we're going to break that down and more. And so as you can tell, my goodness, do we have a lot to get to. And if you want to be a part of the show, the place to do that is over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We've got a community chatting away over there. I see Avalon Acres and B-Spec, three girlies are all in the house. And we have a comment form that looks just like this. And so you can drop your comments down in the thread. We're going to get to those comments at the end of the show. And so get those fingers ready on the keyboards because we've got a lot to get to. You can also support the show and get access to some member perks on YouTube. You've got some GIF gifts you can use. And you can see we made some swaps today. We've got Rogan is replacing Elon. And the reason we're making this switch is because we needed to clear room for the GIF of the day, which is the CNN Trump takedown from, uh, I think this was WWE, something like that. And so this... Just in honor of the show topic today, if you are a YouTube member, then you will be able to use this gift. This is Donald Trump, you know, I think many, many years ago, who is taking out CNN right there at the World Wrestling Federation. So uh, that will be available if you do support the show. Appreciate that. And of course, as you join, we get more gifts that we can use. And so I certainly appreciate that. You also get community badges. You may see those uh, in the chat. That's what those mean. 
And so they sort of tear up, kind of a little fun thing. And so we've got some YouTube shout outs to Mr. J Bug, Blue Bunnies in the house, Ricky Bishop, as well as Henry Dixon, along with Wolfgang Deo. They joined up at that supporter level. And so they get some shout outs. And so I really much uh, very greatly appreciate that. If you want to join, there is the button to do it right next to that subscribe button. Thank you for allowing me to get through that. All right. Without any further ado, let's dive into it. Imagine you're Brian Stelter, which is a horrific thing, but let's imagine you are, and you're waking up into a nightmare. You say, take a look at your email and something comes through and it says that your basically mentor is leaving. Here's what he posted first thing in the morning at 9.02 AM, February 2nd, Brian Stelter says, Jeff Zucker just announced his resignation to a stunned CNN period, period. That's all I have to say about that. Jeff Zucker just announced his resignation to a stunned CNN period. And so he's going to give us the actual details of this, but you know, who the heck is Jeff Zucker? You know, who is this guy, right? I don't watch a lot of CNN. Uh, when I have to, I go and clip stuff for the show and just to sort of poke around, but I try not to watch a lot of the mainstream media in general, right? I don't watch a lot of Fox news either. I just don't watch a lot of these people other than what I have to watch. But Jeff Zucker, this guy is pretty much a powerhouse and we want to make sure that we sort of recognize this. You know, it, it's important to, I think, recognize the characteristics of effective people so that you can rebut them. In other words, if the, if the concept of uh, pe people fighting for liberty or freedom or for decentralization or small government or individual liberty or personal sovereignty and all of those things, it's going to require some very competent, capable people in order to carry that message forward. And so what I think that side needs to do is analyze the other side. Jeff Zucker has been somebody who's been very effective at pushing messages of a very powerful variety for a very long time. He's been somebody who is sort of universally recognized as a leader, as we're going to see through this show. So let's spend a quick minute and see who is this guy. Here is Jeff Adam Zucker. Born 1965, American executive, oversaw a ton of different things. CNN, CNN International, HLN, CNN Digital, went to Columbia Business School. And my goodness, folks, can you believe this? They're everywhere. Where did he go to school? Harvard. Ugh, these Harvard people. And you can see he's like basically the president of everything. NBC Entertainment, NBC Universal, NBC Universal CEO, uh, uh, chief executive officer. He went to uh, Disney president of CNN Worldwide, Warner Media News and Sports, the whole thing. And so been around for a very long time. Years active, 1986 to present. Married and divorced. And so he's not single, or I'm sorry, he's not married. He is single. He has four children. And so this is what he wrote. This is what Brian Stelter woke up to. In addition to being himself, he had to have some really bad news delivered. It says, as a part of the investigation into Chris Cuomo's tenure at CNN, I was asked about a consensual relationship with my closest colleague. Doesn't mention her. We're going to get to her name. Someone I have worked with for more than 20 years. I acknowledge the relationship evolved in recent years. I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't. I was wrong. Period. As a result, I am resigning today. Okay. So as a result of you not disclosing a relationship, someone you've worked with for more than 20 years, I think we all probably know who that is there, Jeff. If it's your closest colleague and you've been working with this person for 20 years. Okay. All right. So he says, I came to CNN January 28, 2013. Together, we had nine great years. I certainly wish my tenure here had ended differently, but it was an amazing run and I loved every minute. I am grateful to the thousands of incredibly talented CNN, Turner Sports employees, success around us. I wish each and all of you nothing but the best ahead with gratitude and much love, Jeff. Whoa. That doesn't make any sense. We're used to people coming out with like big, like suitcases full of baggage, right? Harvey Weinstein, it was like every day. There was like, oh, another one. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. Tiger Woods, same thing, right? Oh, 14. Oh, 15. Oh, my goodness. Another. Okay. And it just kept going. Bill Cosby, same story, right? Here, is this the end of it? Is like, this is, the, this is it? Well, that's kind of a weird thing to do to have to resign. 
Yeah, so, all right. Well, let's learn a little bit more about Mr. Zucker. Uh, he, here he has, uh, he's married to Kathy, was married in 1996. Four children, they divorced in 2017. Colon cancer survivor, took a six-week leave of abs absence to recover from heart surgery. So not much detail there, but he's divorced. He's got four kids and, all right. And so, uh, Brian Stelter, as we know, had a difficult morning. Uh, Jake Tapper, also on CNN, he has a show called The Lead, and he came out. And he's detailing for us what happened. He says, how an investigation into Chris Cuomo led to Jeff Zucker resigning as the CNN president. Let's get some info on this from Jake. This is happening in real time back on Wednesday. A stunner here at CNN today. This morning, CNN president Jeff Zucker announced his resignation effective immediately, citing an undisclosed consensual relationship with a close colleague. Consensual. Let's bring in CNN chief media correspondent Brian Stelter. So... Brian, uh, Jeff Zucker said that his departure uh, stems from an independent investigation into former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo, an investigation into how uh, Chris tried to help his brother uh, disgraced then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Can you explain that to our viewers? Because I think a lot of people don't understand yeah, why weird. that would lead to this. Yeah, I right. don't. Zucker's no. undoing stems from the Cuomo brothers scandal because, Reading. as we all remember, Zucker defended Chris Cuomo and kept him on the air at 9 p.m. during the then governor scandal. Eventually, Zucker fired Cuomo in early December after further revelations about how the brothers worked together. Mm. But before taking action, CNN retained a law firm called Cravath. Cravath oh, we're going to dig into this. the Cuomo matter. Cravath had a lot to look into, including an allegation of sexual misconduct against Chris Cuomo from a former junior colleague. Cuomo denied that allegation. But Cravath has been doing interviews, looking into Cuomo, looking for any issues. That's actually been going on as recently as last week. And mm. Zucker was brought in last week for questioning as a result of that probe. So we have a domino effect here from Andrew Cuomo to Chris Cuomo and now to Jeff Zucker. Zucker was brought in and questioned, and one of the topics was about this relationship with Allison Gullist, the longtime CNN chief communications executive and now chief marketing officer. Uh, she has been Zucker's right-hand woman for years. They've been working together, dating back to their days together at NBC. And that relationship, which then turned romantic, is at issue here, Jake. So as I understand... All right, so he goes through, gives us a little bit of a play-by-play, -play, right? It's kind of this billiard ball analogy that, uh-oh, Andrew Cuomo kind of stepped in it. Uh-oh, that led to Chris Cuomo. Uh-oh, guess what happened there? It, it, it sort of it spiraled back all over, all over CNN. Yeah, and so he talks about this woman. Her name is Allison Golist, and this is a little bit about her. Now, this is from her website, from CNN's website, right? She's a high-up executive. She's an executive VP and chief marketing officer. Let's see here. Oversight, she says, of all communications, messaging, and marketing strategy. Huh. So she's a very effective marketer, if you think CNN's doing well, I guess, on behalf of the portfolio of CNN networks, which includes a bunch of other things. Serves as the chief spokesperson for new brands, works all over the place, worldwide portfolio. Sir, oh, 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 look at this. Yeah, we're going to get back to that paragraph. Prior to this, served with Governor Cuomo as communications director of New York State. Look at that. Golist actually worked with Cuomo. We're going to get to that later on. Very interesting. Now, I also checked this out, but Jeff Zucker, as of 1247 this afternoon, he's still on there as chairman and president. So the webmaster didn't even get notified about this. He still has an email in his inbox. Hey, can you remove Jeff from the website for crying out loud? He's not the president anymore. Get him off there. So it happened quickly is the point. So now that we know about the parties, Jeff and Allison, is that it? Like, that's it? It's just a disclosure problem? It's just that Jeff and Allison just didn't tell somebody ahead of them? Two top executives that are close colleagues? for 20 years. Yeah, that's it, according to Brian. He's, yeah, that's what he said, here. I understand it, Brian. Uh, first of all, Jeff and Allison are both divorced. Yeah. Uh, and Allison doesn't report to Jeff. She reports to somebody with Warner Media. No conflict so there. So the issue here is not necessarily of the relationship, but that it wasn't disclosed to CNN's parent company. That's it. Warner Media. Do I have that right? Is that right? The disclosure does seem to be the key issue That's what here. it and seems. acknowledged that in his statement yeah. this morning, saying, quote, uh, as part of the investigation into Cuomo's tenure at CNN, I was asked about a consensual relationship with my closest colleague. I acknowledged the relationship evolved in recent years. Here's the key line. I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't. I was wrong. That's as the key result, line. I am resigning right. today. 
Gullis is saying she's intending to stay with CNN. She's also acknowledging, though, in a statement that the relationship changed during COVID and, quote, I regret that we didn't disclose it at the right time. So there's this issue of disclosure, which is spelled out in Warner Media's standards of business conduct. It's something that lots of corporate America firms have, where uh, if you end up in a romantic relationship at work, you need to tell a superior. Of course, oh, we're talking come about on. superiors at CNN here, so they would have had to go up to the top of Warner Media to disclose it. And they're both acknowledging this wasn't disclosed. Now, if there's other shoes they're going to drop here, Jake, maybe there will. Maybe oh. there won't. Right now, oh. other shoes have dropped. For mm. now, this is a story about two people in a consensual relationship <laughs> who didn't tell me. Oh, Brian. Because that is all come, come on. Of a How do you. A legal battle. Jeff How do these guys do this? Effective immediately. All right, Brian Stelter, thanks Wild. so much. Appreciate it. Wild, you know, they, they're they're good at it. You know, they do have good poker faces there. Brian Stelter, he can deliver that little scripted bullet point statement. And he says that that's what it appears to be, you know, only just a disclosure thing. These two top executives, you know, they were just, you know, kind of, you know, getting it on with each other. And then they just didn't tell anybody about it, even though everybody knew about it, as we're going to find out. So it's very curious that that Brian is, well, he's going to continue to sort of hold the line. He's very, he's very good at this. He knows that another shoe is going to drop, but he comes out and says, well, you know, this is all we know. It seems to be about disclosure. Something might come out later, but, you know, who could who could possibly know whether that's going to happen or not? And so we get other reaction from around CNN. CNN's Allison Camerata doesn't like this. She's unhappy about this. Curtis Hauk over on Twitter posted this up said that she's feeling an incredible loss. It's very deeply personal because he's such a remarkable person and an incredible leader. He's got an uncanny ability to make people feel special, and she adds that it feels wrong when he was penalized for love. And I agree with that, right? I think it would be wrong to be penalized for love. I think it would be ridiculous if he was fired over something like this or asked to resign over something like this. But it's not just something like this. It's not just a consensual relationship. And so they're going to play this cover for, for a long time, knowing full well that there's a lot more behind the curtain here as we're going to get to. But let's listen in. Here's Miss Camerata. But I do just want to say something personal for a moment, if I Tell may. Tell us. Sure. That is, I mean, I, I feel it deeply personally, but also I think I speak for all of us and our colleagues. This is an incredible loss. It's an incredible loss. Jeff is a remarkable person and an incredible leader. <laughs> He has this uncanny ability to make, I think, every one of us feel special and valuable. Yeah, how in our how own special, way, even though, though that's the he's question. managing an international news organization yeah. of thousands of Maybe people. Maybe it's a little too I just special. I know that he had this well, too much. unique that's the ability problem. to make us feel special. Yeah. And I don't think that that comes around <laughs> all the time. And I think, again, it's an incredible loss. And I just think it's so regrettable how. It happened. If, if what you're reporting mm. is true, these are two consenting adults who are both executives. Right. right. That, that <clears throat> they can't have a private relationship um, feels wrong. Yeah. So it's very interesting. So that sort of sentiment is all throughout CNN. You know, they actually, I mean, they really sort of are enamored with this guy. He sounds like he's a great leader. I mean, he's got them all sort of row in the same direction. They all absolutely, you know, are basically ideologically aligned and they get up every day and they're pretty enthusiastic about doing their job, coming out there and just beating the drum. I hate Trump and in, investigate Trump, it, uh, you know, eliminate Trump, impeach Trump third, fourth, fifth time. Right. He's got a he's got a pretty, pretty you know nobody watches them and that's part of the problem but they have a good consistent you know they're they're like they're that team over there that everybody's like man they look like they really know what they're doing but nobody's interested in, in them and they're not winning really winning but anyways so that's what's going on a lot of love and accolades for Mr. Zucker Zucker and uh, here is the other point of that right everybody knew this was going on so just like Miss Camerata was saying everybody knew that's not even an interesting conversation anymore inside the relationship according to variety matt donnelly says it was just open yeah matt donnelly and elizabeth wagmaster write the office romance that led to zucker's abrupt resignation on wednesday made for shocking headlines but for media insiders and employees of the news network the only surprise was that had finally gone public is that it's a surprise zucker's fondness for marketing officer allison golist had been common for knowledge years, common knowledge for years. In a joint statement, he said it was the closest colleague. And so people know that. And so as the story continues to unfold, now we get, we get a little bit more starts to leak out of Brian Stelter here. Daily Caller caught this clip, says he was 
he's talking now to Camerata saying that he's concerned that old CNN anchor Chris Cuomo might actually have some incriminating evidence against other people. In other words, the rabbit hole goes dramatically deeper. We're going to break this down. Here's Brian Stelter unveiling it. The Chris Cuomo reference. Cuomo was fired in December, and he is not going out quietly. He was fired, and there were reports that he wasn't going to get paid the millions of dollars that were going to be on the remainder of his contract. So as a source uh, said to me earlier today, he was trying to burn the place down. He was going to court, uh, trying to Cuomo. burn the place down, and claiming that he had incriminating information about Zucker and Gullist. So if that's the case, if this is a domino effect, that begins with Andrew Cuomo going down in the governor's office and then Chris Cuomo being Who's fired next? from CNN and then Jeff Zucker losing his job at CNN. That is a remarkable domino effect, a chain yeah. of events. I think that is part of the story. Yeah, and the question is, what if Jeff Zucker was protecting people like Brian Stelter? Oh, and he's not there anymore. Oh, well, wonder if that domino effect keeps cascading down and many people are asking themselves that question. Is this going to be a clean house situation or what? We don't know, but that was CNN's sort of moment of reckoning when they realized that their fearless leader is no longer going to be there anymore. And so that was part of the CNN reaction. But the rest of the media is noticing something interesting as well. Mediaite grabbed this clip from Fox News, and this is Janice Dean. Janice Dean has a reaction to these relationships, saying this is one of the worst kept secrets ever. Everybody knew about this on Fox News. Everybody knew about this everywhere. And it's also very, very interesting and convenient to find out where Allison Golist work worked prior to joining What's CNN. Happening, you know, the investigation into Andrew Cuomo's relationship with Chris Cuomo. And now, you know, was there a cover up from the president of CNN? And how did that unfold? What I do hear is that this was one of the worst kept secrets, the Zucker relationship. And, <laughs> and the fact that this woman, who was his second in command, uh, was also at one point working for Andrew Cuomo. So, you, I mean, you can't make the script up. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 again, it, it's probably just the idea. Yeah, right. So that starts to raise eyebrows now. Now we're sort of stepping outside of the consensual relationship between two adults. Now you start to say, oh, wait a minute. So we've got this sort of uh, this chain building where it goes from Zucker to Allison to Chris Cuomo to Andrew Cuomo. Oh, and also Allison used to work for Andrew Cuomo. Oh, it's all coming together. And so Rolling Stone pointed this out, says CNN probe eyes Zucker's ties to Andrew Cuomo. Ongoing investigation is now unfolding. And we can go back a little bit in time. And I clipped out a lot of this article. There's a lot of detail in this if you want to go read the full thing. The slides have the link. But we go back and just a short about two years ago, right, two and a half years ago, on May 21st, Jason Killar, this guy takes over as the CEO of Warner Media. Warner Media is the parent company that, you know, basically governs CNN. Massive conglomerate owned by AT&T. Zucker, who also served as chairman, lost oversight of CNN. This guy comes in and says, hey, Zucker, you're kind of on the back burner a little bit. Sources say Killar was aware of rumors that Zucker was in a long-term relationship with Gullist. So Keelar comes out, he sees what's going on there, and he says, all right, this is what we're going to do. At the time, she was also the network's chief marketing officer. And so Keelar moved stuff around, and Zucker was just given 24 hours notice of the move. He was livid, they said. Start moving things around. In other words, this new guy comes in, CEO, he takes the reins, starts removing authority from Zucker. Zucker's pissed. He's livid as hell. And so Keelar suddenly restructured several journalists then after that began chasing the story of Zucker and Golist. So you can see all three of them down here. Zucker in the middle. We've got Zolist, or Golist over here on the right. Back in September, some reporter asked Keelar, they said, hey, are you trying to move out Golist from under Zucker as a result about learning their relationship? So Keelar comes in, makes some changes, moves stuff around, and Keelar, Keelar moves Golas under out from under Zucker separates the two and it goes on still behind the scenes executive showdown ensued Zucker appeared to have prepared uh, pre prevailed after the May 2021 announcement Keelar was blindsided by the news began negotiating his exit after Zucker was ru rumored to get, be getting a bigger role with Disney all right so you can see what's going on right a lot of business shenanigans all back and forth behind the scenes 
Everything, though, came crashing down. All the well-planned, laid plans became crashing down as soon as the investigation into Chris Cuomo started heating up. Evidence only surfaced in recent days say two sources and Keelar took swift action in confronting the CNN presidents. How? They've got emails and other evidence. Undeniable picture of the duo's romantic relationship. Facing termination, Zucker decided to resign. But it's not just about the affair. We also see that that law firm, Kravis, Swain, and more, remember that same law firm that Brian Stelter was talking about, is that Brian Stelter was talking about is now back in the picture. Source familiar with Forrest's work on the matter says that it's not just Chris Cuomo's alleged role in helping the brother, Andrew navigate a sexual harassment scandal that has come out from under her scrutiny. Zucker, you can see here. So we've got all four of the people, right? So we had Brian Stelter, who was giving us the, the chain of command, the, the connecting the dots. All four individuals are down there at the bottom of the screen. And so we can go through this just one by one. As Zucker was plotting his media world comeback, he and Golas became intertwined with the Cuomo brothers. Back in 2012, Golas joined and started working for Andrew Cuomo. Not long after then, Zucker joined CNN. In short, Golas resigned from the governor's office and then went and worked over for CNN. And so now you see the chain developing. At this time, we've got Chris Cuomo, who's an anchor over at CNN. Of course, obviously, is Andrew Cuomo's brother. A press release at the time saying that Golas, when she goes over to CNN, is going to work for somebody else. But that reporting structure didn't last long. And so all of these dots get connected. The sources say that the investigation suggests that Zucker and Golas were advising the governor. Okay, this is where things start to get really problematic now. So I reverse the dots on this. So now we can say, let's say that CNN is at the top of the hierarchy. And CNN is Jeff Zucker, the president. Under him, of course, we've got chief marketing director. Under her, we've got Chris Cuomo, one of the CNN anchors. Sort of next to him is his brother. Sources say that the investigation says that Zucker and Golas were advising the governor. Okay, so basically these two people were working with Governor Andrew Cuomo. This was back during the early days of the pandemic. Back then, if you remember, Andrew Cuomo was sparring with President Trump over COVID messaging. They booked the governor to appear on the network exclusively, bringing him on all the time. Chris Cuomo was doing the interviewing. Okay, so all four of these little people are peas in a pod. Cuomo and Gola's conduct too would, you know, it says would, would mark an ethical breach for the executives. So you have this like this incestuous relationship where you've got, you know, this, this gov it, it's the government media complex, right? It's like multiple layers. And there's been other articles about this, right? People connect the dots on this stuff all the time. You realize that many people in the government are sort of married or closely related to or connected to many people in the media. And they're connected to many people in, you know, the, the, the mega government corporation type type companies. Right. And so they're all just sort of interconnected. And now it's being exposed. And so we can see that the the turning point here was really the Chris Cuomo exit. When he left, he was like a bull in the china shop. He started throwing elbows around and everybody was sort of concerned about this. Now, there was a deposition that took place while Andrew Cuomo was under investigation and Chris Cuomo was asked a series of questions. And Chris Cuomo, in particular, was asked about one of these conversations that he had with Andrew Cuomo about messaging back in February of 27. February 27 of last year, of 2021, right as all of the allegations against the governor, former governor, were coming out. And so we've got several different, we can sort of peel back the layers of this onion and see what was happening underneath the surface because this all came out from Letitia James's office when they were investigating this. Here's their conversation, a depo with Chris Cuomo. What did you tell Governor Cuomo was your take on public perception on his February 27th statement? This is a problem and you have to explain it and you have to own that this was bad judgment. Bad judgment, brother. Um, and that has to be clear. I mean, my opinion never changed. And, mm. and so I guess I'm just trying to understand, was, was your view or take that you expressed to Governor Cuomo that this statement didn't sufficiently own it? No, but just that it, it was going to be a continuing concern. This wasn't a one-day story. 
And what did you tell him about public perception about this statement? <sighs> that as a Democrat... Tell us. This was not going to just go away. And he was going to have to deal with it. And that he had to assume that people in his party were going to come after him. Yeah, he's consulting with his brother. Did you advise your brother to do anything after February 27th, after this statement was issued? With respect to? The allegations of sexual harassment against him. So the statement comes out, you have a conversation with him about your take on public perception. And sort of what's the next thing that you're involved in with respect to the allegations of sexual harassment? I mean, there were more. More women. So as there were more, he would ask me to listen to what was being said and help him. Um, were you involved in the preparation of Governor Cuomo for a press conference in early March? I was on uh, some of the conversations about it. Oh. And it was Who else was on those conversations? Process, and I just defaulted to speaking to him directly. Um, about reinforcing the points that I've made to you. Yes. I'm happy to repeat them if you'd like okay. me to. But that was my mantra. Did you ask to participate in the prep for the press conference in early March? I don't know about exactly that press conference, but I did from time to time when I felt that I was, being, uh. I was out of the loop for <laughs> something that I wanted to understand so that I could have some sense of whether or not this was being handled the way I thought it should. Um, I don't know if that was one of those particular occasions. Okay, so right, anybody can say, look, it's it's one brother trying to help their other brother out, and this is a you know this is a brother trying to help a brother, right? If you are, you know, if you have a brother and they call you, hey, I'm in trouble, I need help, you're going to help your brother, right? Nobody has a problem with that. Everybody has a problem with these people abusing their positions of power to insulate themselves using the powers and strengths of each other's offices. That's what comports, that's what conflict of interest would be the layman's way of putting that because we as the American people, the people watching CNN, the people living in New York, people tune into CNN and they expect to get unbiased, you know, reality in terms of news and they don't. They get this little fake facade, this, you know, patty cake game that is being played by the governor and Chris. And the question is, who else was on these phone calls? Christopher Cuomo just admits, yeah, I was on there. And I was on a lot of them, right? He was texting me. There were more women. We saw, when we lived this. We talked a lot about this back when it was actually happening. And I wasn't even, you know, I was sort of uh, defending the governor to some degree because a lot of these allegations were just really ridiculous. But the point here is that who else was on those calls, right? And we know now that there is some rumors, some smoke, at least around that maybe Zucker and Allison Gallus were both involved in these things. That would put the president of CNN sort of facilitating a governmental response to the pandemic, which would just be, you know, something that I think we've all realized this this disgusting incestuous relationship between the government and the media anyways. But that would really just show you uh, how strong it really is anyways so there were some other things that came out of this deposition that we don't get to hear because it's been redacted and so now the question is who did hear these things and are some of these things things that might have contributed to zucker's resigning okay we heard previously on the show that brian stelter acknowledged for all of us said very clearly that yeah chris cuomo might have some pretty damning evidence against Zucker or, you know, maybe there is another shoe to drop further down the line. We're not sure about this. Maybe something in these depositions would be revelatory. Let's listen in and you're going to hear a lot of nothing, but I'll fill it in for you because they are talking. Here is what an audio redaction sounds like. Did you have any conversations with anyone in the executive chamber or the consultants about how to potentially use the fact Blank, 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 blank. Use the fact that so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. On the contrary, my conversations was, were not to lump Charlotte Bennett in, which was the temptation, which went to my conversations about you need to marshal your facts and know who you're talking about and treat people the right way here. Um, and that this situation had to be 
uh, given tremendous deference and respect. I understand that was your perspective. My question was, were you involved in any conversations in which anyone in the executive chamber or the consultants discussed? Never. Discussed, blank, blank, blank. Did you discuss or anybody in the chamber discuss this? Anybody? Once again, sorry to jump the question. No. No one ever raised no one ever said any conversation you were a part of. That so-and-so did so-and-so and so-and-so no. and so-and-so. And so and so. And, or this or this or this, right? No. Huh, okay. Or anyone, this text says. How about, how about this one right here? Is that language that was used by people in the executive chamber? I never heard it. And never I don't agree it. with it. And I don't believe it to be true. Okay, so they've got a lot of stuff, right? They've got text messages. I don't have more questions about that, but do Ms. Clark. So why are you forwarding that then? Somebody asks him, they say, hey, why are you forwarding that message, right? If this message comes into you and you don't recall and you were part of this executive chamber and there's all these meetings taking place about who's going to be helping the governor and you've got a lot of involvement. We've just all laid down the, the, the details on this, right? You said you're involved and we've got a list of all these other meetings and who knows who's involved now. It could be people from CNN as far as we can tell. You're from CNN at this time, Chris. You get this text message from so-and-so, we don't know what it says, but you forwarded it. Why'd you forward it, someone, another attorney says. Let's listen to see what he has to say. I was forwarding it, I was asking, is it fake? Like, I, I couldn't believe that it existed. Like, this had never been told to me before. You know what I'm saying, June? This had never been shared with me about how- The question is, have you seen this? Have you seen is this? Fake? Presumably. A natural reading of this is, check this out. No. The natural, that may be yours. That's a, a reading of it. No, no disrespect. My actual reading of it was shock. Shock. That the situation, the context, the history. Look, these are not good answers for my brother that I'm giving you right now. I understand that. But it oh. happens to be the truth, okay? I didn't know this so much so that I said, is it fake? Because I thought maybe this isn't true, that this is just being brought up the way a lot of other stupid stuff does. And that's what it was about. Did All right, so you can see how these things work, right? He starts this deposition. It kind of cracks the shell a little bit. They start peeling some of the layers back. They get a little bit more information. They go talk to somebody else. And what ended up happening with this law firm is it's actually a retired federal judge who is sort of, uh, I think what was an ex investigator for some government bureaucrat uh, bureaucracy. And so she's actually sort of digging into this, right? They, CNN brought this firm in, they hired this person and she's going to be now, you know, uncovering all of these, turning over every single stone to figure out what is there. And so, you know, we'll see where it goes. You know, are, are they, we, we, we know that in New York, they're not charging anybody with anything, nor is there enough evidence to support that. But we see that other people throughout the media are very uh, elated. True happiness, as the saying goes, is seeing your neighbor fall off his roof. Fox News is enjoying it at the moment. Here's what they say. First. Oh, mercy. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more going on here. Uh, she used to work with Andrew Cuomo. There are so many conflicts of interest. Uh -huh. I don't believe Brian Stelter about much. <laughs> I think... You know, in general, he needs to stop talking. Uh, but I, I do believe, you know, his source, which is probably just Don Lemon in the men's room, saying that Chris Cuomo <laughs> is trying to burn the place down. That's exactly what he's doing. If he's not getting his money, he's taking everyone with him. And, you know, it's like these are all uh, just nastiest of the nasties. And they know there's so many bodies. They know where they're buried. This wasn't a secret. Katie Couric wrote about it. Everyone yes. knew about it. It wasn't because he was trying to hide the little teeny tiny Vienna sausage. There's much Ooh. more going on here. <laughs> and uh, Chris Cuomo isn't done. <laughs> you should stop talking. Oh, goodness. So, Emily, let's talk to the law. All right. So Shall you can we? see, right, we're all just a big bunch of grown high schoolers. They're all grinning ear to ear like, oh, this is great. <laughs> because it is, right? That's the other team. That's that loser high school down the street that they always get into fights with. And so they're happy to see them fall off their roof but other people in the media over at the view they're asking good questions as well they're saying hey you know if this is the justification for why zucker is retiring 
Why now? Why is this coming up all of a sudden? Because Katie Couric, somebody who has been in the media for a long time, she wrote a book about this. She said that she's observed this relationship for a long time and it made her very uncomfortable. And so here is what The View had to say about that. Katie Couric wrote in her book, in her memoir, that she was uncomfortable with that relationship, that there was something that seemed odd, right? Um, Soledad O'Brien tweeted out yesterday that- um, She worked with Matt Lauer. Was she uncomfortable with that relationship? Who, um, uh, Katie Couric? Katie, yeah. She wrote a little bit about it, but not quite a lot. Oh. Um, but And then Soledad um, O'Brien, she was a former uh, CNN anchor. She tweeted out yesterday that their relationship was an open secret. And I have to say, you know, it, it has been an open secret. It's something that everyone talked about, sure. about the, the, the length of their relationship, when it started. And now you have someone like Al Alison Gullis who's saying, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, and that's also an interesting point. You know, she gets to stay, but he's got to go. What kind of garbage is that? Are we living in like a matriarchal society now? What's happening? Ridiculous. Anyways, so uh, look, it just carries on. We've got Brian Stelter here who is saying that he actually wanted to stay longer and they just like threw him out. We got 12 seconds more, Brian. Everyone processed the yep. news, uh, Richard. And as you said, anybody in any corporate environment can relate to this on a number of levels. First, uh, Zucker has been the rock of CNN, a larger than life leader. Uh, second, he's resigning not in a few weeks or in a few months, but effective immediately. I'm told he wanted to stay longer, but Warner Media said no. Here's the, the thrust of his statement saying uh, that, he, that he put out explaining this, saying as part of the. All right, so they basically threw him on his butt, and CNN anchors are unhappy about it. And so there was a meeting that took place after all this fallout unfolded, and uh, there's a, a leak recording, a leaked recording that came out. And so there's an organization called Peak News. I want to share this article with you, and then we'll jump into the questions. But here you can see that there's, you know, CNN is trying to sort of uh, put the pieces back together. It says, inside the CNN news room, clash with Jason Kilar. This is the new CEO. And so just after this all happened on Wednesday night, uh, uh, last night, I'm sorry, Warner Media, Jason Kilar and others all had a meeting. They all got together. It did not go well. The meeting, which I obtained a recording of last night, highlights the profound sense of loyalty that CNN's on-air talent have towards their leader. And they say despite his violation of policy, they feel anger about the circumstances of his leaving. In the course of more than an hour, three things became clear. CNN's top staff believes that Zucker's punishment was unnecessary. They are dubious about Keylar's motives for the decision. And they wonder if his own relationship with Zucker played a role. They're at a loss to understand how the network is going to function in the absence of a leader who is intimately involved in every aspect of the network. Okay, so I mean, basically what this is implying is that this like, this is catastrophic, right? This is more than just a changing of the guards. The CNN on-air talent are all saying, we don't know what we're going to do. Jason, you're in charge now, but you have no capabilities to guide this ship, to steer this ship. And so here's how that meeting went. In his opening remarks, Keelar said that it was with a heavy, heavy, sad, awful heart that he's got to make this announcement. Goes back, talks about Zucker being around for 15 years. But then he said, let's talk about the future. And nobody cares about that. Everybody wanted to hear about this exit. He said, employees keep their grace and composure, blah, blah, blah. But unsurprisingly, none of that interested anybody. We have Dana Bash who came in. She's on CNN's uh, chief political correspondent team. She says, for a lot of us, the feeling is that for Jeff, the punishment didn't fit the crime, right? Which we heard. So she's telling that to the new CEO. She says, there are so many people who work here and got a second chance because that's what Jeff believed in. And it feels like he didn't get that chance. Gloria Borger also came out. She's the network's chief political analyst. She's asking, why was it handled this way? If you can't tell us why you made the decision, why was it handled? So I think it's without a lot of dignity. I mean, Jeff just kind of disappeared. It wasn't a graceful exit at all. There was just a sudden exit. Can you explain that? Right, so they're asking the CEO of this. So they're like, it's like open mutiny at CNN. More pile on. Casey Hunt says, what was the business case for making this decision right now? Especially that we're just about to launch CNN Plus. She says, now every single story that get writ get, gets written about us is going to be about this. You're ruining our work. Keylar said, well, we got to go back to our values. You know, I felt this was the right course of action. I commit you to this. And so he's doing the CEO thing. That's all he can do. 
all you can do. But the anchors are unhappy about this. Things then start to get a little bit more confrontational. We get Pamela Brown, she comes in, and she asks Kilar, she says, did your personal feelings at all or any past conflict you've had with Jeff, did that play into this at all? Like, I know you two were at, it, at each other's throats previously. Did that play a role here? Kilar says, no, my relationship with Jeff goes way back to 2007 at Hulu. Doesn't have anything to do with this. Then we get Caitlin Collins here. Now, Caitlin Collins, man, she is like very aggressive with Kilar. She says, um, well, she's the White House correspondent. So, you know, she's, she might be auditioning for, you know, a new position somewhere. I'm not sure, but she's going after him. She says, thanks, Jason. I'm Caitlin Collins. I actually don't think we've met before. Based on that, did the outside firm recommend that you fire Jeff? You know, the law firm, did they actually recommend this? And Jeff says, so uh, listen, Caitlin, I'm not going to go into the details of the interchange between the outside firm and any of their body of work that they did for us. And Collins is like a prosecutor, like a really like a defense attorney. He says, were you aware of Jeff and Allison's relationship before this? He says, no, I was not aware of their relationship before this. Does anybody believe that? Because everybody else that we heard from today said it was an open secret. And so Colin says, and when did you become aware? He said, look, out of respect for this process, I'm absolutely not going to answer that line of questioning. Okay, so like, stop with the inquisition. And she says, you're not going to answer the line of questioning of when you became aware? What? And Keelar said, yeah, of when I became aware. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to answer that question. Colin says, okay, I don't really see how that pertains to Jeff, but whatever. But my other question would be, okay, given that it's been reported that you said, you're, you're said to be negotiating your exit from this company after the merger goes through, did you consult with the other executives before you made this decision? So you're on your way out of here, buddy. And you're just firing people before you leave. Did you tell the other people who are inheriting this company what you've done? Because they may not be appreciative of the fact that you just fired somebody that we happen to think is a pretty dang good leader. Caitlin is just going on. Colin says, <clears throat> goes back over to uh, Jason. J Keelar says, there's a group of folks that you would expect to be involved in this from a legal standpoint and from an HR standpoint. But Colin says, yeah, okay, got that. But did you consult with the other executives? You know, maybe the ones who have taken over for Jeff on an interim basis about this decision? and the effect that it's going to have on this company? And Keelar says, I'm not going to answer that question. Colin says, does that mean no? This is She's going after this, the CEO of the whole company. Good for her. Says, I'm not going to answer that question from Keelar. So she wants some answers. Now, then we get our friend Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper comes in. He addresses the elephant in the room. The lawsuit that CNN's disgraced anchor, Chris Cuomo, is bringing against the network. Remember, he was fired and he sued CNN over this. And so Tapper comes out and he asks a very Jake Tapper type of question. You can see it here. Tapper says, all right, Jason, if you could address the perception that Chris Cuomo gets fired by CNN, Chris Cuomo hires a high-powered lawyer who has a scorched earth policy, who then makes it very clear to the world that unless Jeff... Zucker gives Chris Cuomo his money, they're going to blow the place up. Stuff starts getting leaked to gossip websites about Jeff and Allison. And then weeks later, Jeff comes forward, discloses this and resigns. Not willingly. Tapper says, you know, an outside observer might say, wow, it looks like Chris Cuomo succeeded. He threatened. Jeff said, we don't negotiate with terrorists. And he blew the place up. How do we get past that perception that this is the bad guy winning? says Jake, right? Very, very concerned that, yeah, that basically Jeff just got thrown out because of Cuomo's lawsuit. Keelar responds, says, look, I can't help you when it comes to perception, okay? We're not gonna let this define us. What's gonna define us is all of our CEO stuff and our legacy. So then Collins comes back out. She's still mad. Collins comes back out and says, listen, Jason, I think the issue is not a perception, okay? What Jake just described is actually what's happened here. Chris Cuomo is a man scorned because he was fired for being held accountable for his actions, and Jeff is part of the result of this. 
And it sounds like you didn't consult with any of the executives on removing a critical part of the company. And I think that's the frustration here. Talking about what we do every day, Jeff is a very critical part of that. If you listen to the 9 a.m. calls, if you talk to anybody in this room, producers, people in the control room, that's how they feel. And so Keelar says, well, I appreciate that, but HR, you're absolutely right. I, I don't go to a big group about, you know, about these policies. Don't have visibility into it. This is the appropriate deci decision I had to make. And so then we get this guy, Jim Sciuto. He says, we have a war in Europe. We have midterm elections coming up. And Jeff was the host of a whole decision making process. So what are we going to do now? He writes, Jeff is the most impactful executive in history, and we are totally screwed, basically. He says, you cannot replace Jeff. It's not possible. No one could. This is from Michael Bass. And so everybody is saying it. And so it looks like CNN is just in for a rough restructuring, whatever that happens to be. All right, let's see what you have to say about it. I know it is some people's not favorite topic, but let's see what you have to say about this, see if there's any questions over at our friends at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. We've got first one in from Renee says, happy Friday, watchers. KK says, hey, guys. Grouchy old cat lady says, in a New York City press briefing on gun violence with President Biden, Governor Hochul, Garland, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, Nadler, and other people said that everything regarding gun reform laws that is unable to pass into law but should be law should be passed by executive order and then hopefully it's going to become law i'd like to see where that came from there grouchy old cat lady just to see what the more more details are but sounds about right doesn't surprise me at all let's see we've got oh my god this is awesome said these people are so used to jeff telling everyone what to report on they don't know what to do now that jeff is gone that's a great point yeah it's like everybody was used to just taking their marching orders and now that they don't get those every day at their 9 a.m. phone calls. What are they going to do? We've got Russell Wallace Warren says the days following 2222 Julian date 33 is not going to be as bad as the fourth. What intended? My conclusion is that bad actors have been and still are bad acting. 2020 is the water tiger year. Tiger mainly contains wood. Therefore, the year 2022 brings wood, earth and fire. The water of 22 is related to career. This birth chart, what? Wood is related to poor health, wrong guidance, or bad attitude. That's from Russell Wallace Warren. I'm not sure where you're going with that there, Russell Wallace Warren, but interesting comment. Renee says, what danger are our athletes really in at the Olympics in China? I'm having memories about a kid that chewed gum in Singapore, but maybe much worse. I don't know. You know, I, I, I put a video out that Nancy Pelosi says that they should be very concerned for their friends and family and their reputations because of what the Chinese might do to them. And if you missed it, the Chinese, you know, they rolled out anal swabs for the Biden diplomats. I made a video about that, the anal COVID swabs. I know, it's a real thing. I got the medical documents. It's medical literature in that video. Let's see, we've got Renee, Ion Energy, wants to know about the implications of the gas deal with Russia and China. I think that they're very excited about that relationship. I think Putin was over there at the Olympics today, falling asleep in the stands when the Ukrainian team came out, and then waking back up when the Russians came out. Vientikis is here, says, Rob, in the spirit of mainstream mouthpieces, it looks like a mass exodus from YouTube has begun. Platforms like Rumble, Rufkin's, Minds, others are getting more popular. Um, popular. I'm upset because they can the MXR Plays channel for no reason. I normally watch it. By the way, the image you have a rogue hair on the top. Thank you. P.S. I wasn't really starting. I can't unsee that rogue hair though now. So, okay. Thank you, Vian. So I'll try to fix it. We've got Bob Loblaws here. Hello, Robert. This is Bob Lob of Bob Loblaw. It's good to see you, Bob Loblaw. I'm glad that you're here. We have Social Vikings says, looking forward to your updates. Let me do a refresh on this and get this back up to speed. Okay, I'm refreshing this right now. Shelly says, Rob, I'm very concerned for the truckers this weekend. I wouldn't put it past Trudeau to call in Antifa disguised as truckers to start something. I think we've already seen some, some uh, indications of that happening. You know, there was... The guy with the Nazi flag we talked about yesterday. We did truckers uh, in depth yesterday, and I think it was on Tuesday. And so we'll probably, you know, if there's, if, I, I presume they'll still be there and that things will continue to uh, heat up next week. And so we'll, we'll definitely follow it along. But there's, you know, there's, it's sort of like 
call response, call response, right? The government does something and then the response happens and then the government responds again and there's a response. And so these things take time. And so we'll just continue to follow it as it happens. And so my goodness, I know it is freezing out there. So I am sending my thoughts and prayers and any warmth, energetic energy I can send to everybody out there who is holding the fort down. Chairman of the board says, Rob, how is this CNN story not been made into a mind map. It's honestly, it's because I can't really take much more of it. I'm looking forward to when the Cuomo brothers are gone in the dustbin of history. We don't ever have to talk about them again. And I just can't, I can't do a mind map on that. There's, there's so many other things to mind map, chairman, but I get what you're saying. It would be a good mind map because you could put all the people out there. Like it's a good idea. I just, I don't have it in me. Thunder seven says, Interesting how photos of Zucker and his ex-wife with Galen Maxwell and Epstein are circling around the web. I didn't know that. You're kidding. Two producers, one with the Chris Cuomo show, recently fired for soliciting minors an incriminating video of what he wanted to do with someone. Maybe CNN is peddling trafficking in more, in more than fake news and CNN knows something about it and he used it to get a payout. I don't know what, I don't know any of the backstory there at all oh it's jake from oxford oh it's jake from oxford i'm in trouble he says hey rob oh buddy you are in trouble it's friday your fun day which is why i try to get my messages in well thanks jake you know i appreciate it i'm glad that you're here i know let me resituate myself i need to get educated says okay although i do know do not know what a fun day is i've been working super hard making sure my father is not feeling he wasted 12 million dollars on my college well that's good but anyway, on to you being in super trouble. Maybe I liked your show. Maybe you were making some sense to me. I wouldn't call it red pill, but I was leaning to the right a little. This is until you spoke about Ole Ned. He is furious. First off, he said in his statement, to be clear, that means he is for real. I know. Oh, Ned. Oh, oh, this is Jake. Okay. So look, folks. Yeah, I remember we got to get these people straight. We have a lot of highly educated people from Oxford and Harvard. Really, those are the only two places. And those are only the two schools that matter, really. But uh, here, we're listening to Jake Sullivan from Oxford talking about Ned Price, the State Department spokesperson from Harvard. Okay, so we've got this now. He says, Ned's statement says that his statement was to be clear. That means he is for real. Oh, I know you think that is some sort of a trigger word that everyone in this administration says. And as soon as we say it, every single, that word that, every single word that follows is a load of crap. And we do say it a lot. Second, are you saying that Ned just watched a, mush, a Russian military recruitment video and that he thinks that means that there's World War III coming? Please, he's smarter than that. It was definitely not a Russian National Guard training video. Third, I'm personally upset with um, you because after watching your video, Ned is now running around yelling at everyone, I am the evidence and then slapping folders out of people's hands. It's becoming a mess around the office. Lastly, I do not want to hear anything about us State Department guys all looking the same. Sure, Ned and I may both be 90 pounds soaking wet, and we both, both may have slender alien-shaped heads, but you better not say that is the only look that we're going for. Oh, man, that is a good one from, it's Jake from Oxford. Man, Jake, so Jake is right. I have made some comments about that. They all have very uh, cylindrical, very uh, cylinder-like faces, right? They're, they're sort of uh, siloed out. And they all go to the same schools and sort of look the same and speak the same and believe the same things. But they're smarter than we are. And so we just have to understand that we just have to let them run things because they went to Harvard and Oxford. Thanks, Jake, for educating us and reminding us. Sometimes I get a little too big for my britches on this show. But Jake from Oxford comes back and says, Rob, you're stupid. Remember. And I remember. So thank you for that education. Let's see. Vienticus says, the one thing I really want to know about this whole CNN thing is who's getting the movie rights? It probably yeah, it could be a good movie. Captain Jim says, hey, Rob, happy Friday. This is more CNN than I've watched in the last five years. Why? Well, look, it's true, okay? I'm seeing people in the locals chat. They, they left like a long time ago. They're like, I'm going over to Viva's channel because this is painful. And I don't blame them. I, you know, look, do you know how much CNN I had to watch to assemble what we're watching here? You know, it's going to be a long, uh, long recovery tonight for me. But he, let's go back to Captain. He says, hopefully this is going to be a new beginning for CNN. May they clean out their barns and return to real unbiased journalism. They can't 
possibly sink any lower, right? Pardon my pink sunglasses. I remember their bits about the coverage of the MH378 years ago, the Malaysian Boeing that disappeared in the Indian Ocean. Back then, it was Don Lemon's, I know many black holes are ridiculous, but are they ridiculous? Or when they told us that a, 700, a 777, quote, will struggle to maintain altitude with empty fuel tanks. That last bit is true, though. Probably the last time they didn't fib. Yeah, I think there was a clip in there uh, on today's show that I glossed over where Brian, St no, oh, it was um, Camerata. Camerata said to Brian, if what you're reporting is true, that's shocking. And I thought, yeah, it's a good question, if it is true, because it's coming from Brian Stelter out of CNN. So you have to ask that question. Even she has to ask it. Former LEO says, Rob, help me understand, after the investigation of the misconduct at CNN, the main takeaway is that Tubin was the only person at CNN who kept his hands to himself. It's not a good look for Tubin. Miss Lucky says, Rob, it couldn't happen to a more deserving nest of snakes. P.S. We waved to you when we drove through Scottsdale on the 101 today. Oh, hey, right, right that direction. You went right there. Shout out to Miss Lucky and Sergeant Bob. John Delar says, you knew this was coming, right? As soon as the new CEO took over and wanted higher ratings, I knew that Zucker was out. He ran CNN into the ground. Their ratings suck. And what do Democrats do when they want to get rid of someone? Oh, it's just a scandal. Works every time. No surprise. It's a fake reason, though, from John Delar. I agree. I think it's hogwash. And Monster One says, did you see the report that said four members of the J6 Commission said Zucker getting fired is a threat to our democracy? No, I'm not joking. No, I did not see that. What? What are you talking about? Zucker firing. Uh, let's see if we can grab this. Uh, I can't find it, but I'm sure you're right about that, Monster One. Monster One says, allegedly the new owner guy is a Trump supporter and wants CNN to be more neutral, so he's getting rid of the partisan hacks. Hmm, I'm not sure. Uh, Vantica says, GoFundMe just officially stopped the Ottawa Stock 2022 Truckistan campaign. What? Update, GoFundMe statement on the Freedom Trucker Convoy. What is this? All right. Thank you for linking this up. Update, GoFundMe statement. To ensure that GoFundMe remains a trusted platform, we now have evidence from law enforcement that previously, previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation with police reports of violence and other unlawful activity. Unbelievable. Following a review... This fundraiser is now in violation of our terms of service. Organizers provided a clear distribution plan for the initial $1 million that was released earlier this week, confirmed the funds would only be used to travel to participate in peaceful protest. We were going to work with organizers to send all remaining funds to credible and established charities. All donors may submit a request for a full refund. What a joke. What an absolute joke. GoFundMe is garbage. Just, it's just garbage. This is like the fifth time I've seen stories about this. You know, they just, what does this say? We now have evidence from law enforcement that the previously peaceful demonstration has become an occupation. What? An occupation? What are they defining that to be? Oh my gosh, I can't even take it right now. So you have to fill out a form freedom convoy request to request a, f a, a refund please complete this form using the email your funds will be processed and returned if you do not submit the funds uh, the request before february 19th the funds will be sent to charities determined by the fundraisers organizer and gofundme this is ridiculous so here's what it's saying it's basically saying we we are holding these funds in trust and we're not going to give them to you because we think you're bad people. But we are going to give them to good people that we decide are good people. So they have the moral superiority to just decide what to do with $9 million. Because they are now defi being defined as uh, being occupied. They're an occupying force. What an absolute joke. You know, I really do hope to see these companies just go away i think that people should should not support these types of companies or support their competitors you know competitors who who allow people to give to causes that they determine to be supportable 
right? I, if I want to donate to the Freedom Truckers and I donate $1,000, I know what I want to do with my money. I don't need GoFundMe or some tech bros in, in Silicon Valley to tell me how that should work. Because I consider myself to be moderately intelligent and I think I know what I want to do with my money. But they say that you, or, or me, or anybody is just too stupid to actually know better. But they do. And so they're going to take that $9 million and give it to a charity. Which is probably fine, right? Because most people wanted to support something good. But who's, who, what charity is this going to? Is it going to support in any way, shape, or form freedom from mandates? I doubt it. Thank you for that, Vianticus. What a joke. Thunder7 says, off topic, but wanted to end the Friday show with good news. Michael Avenatti, convicted today, stole 300000 from ex-client Stormy Daniels. Remember how this grifter was on fake news boasting about how he was going to tra take Trump down? Curse strikes again. Monster1 says, did you see someone dug up some Joe Rogan comments from old shows of him? He allegedly said some racially insensitive things. Now the cancel culture cult is coming for him. Cult means city urban liberal types. This just proves it was never about so-called misinformation. It's about compliance. Rogan dared to find them, defy them, and he must be destroyed at all costs. You know, yeah, Rogan has been catching it from a number of different directions. And I saw something that Tucker Carlson did that I wasn't really thrilled about. I don't know if anybody else saw this, but he was uh, doing his show the other day, sort of like fake defending Joe Rogan, I think. And then he went back and he got this clip of Joe Rogan sort of, you know, being really, really goofy and like really, um, you know, sort of out there. Now, he did the same thing with Don Lamont the other day, but it was just sort of weird. Like he was he was trying to support Joe Rogan. By saying, you know, he's he, he's sort of a canary in the coal mine and he's fighting for all these causes. But at the same time, like he was playing some videos that made him look really dumb. And it felt like it was kind of underhanded. Like he was saying, like, I, I support him, but look what a stupid idiot he is. You know, like he's kind of cute. Like, look, he's trying to engage in, uh, in sophisticated conversation. It just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know if anybody else saw that. It was a weird thing. You know, he... He kind of can be very underhanded from time to time, and it just didn't feel like it was very, very appropriate. And I think that's because, right, Rogan is a threat to everybody who's in that type of media. This, this, you know, he owns the platform. He, uh, not the platform, obviously, now he's sort of, you know, in bed with Spotify. But you get it, right? He's, he's sort of bigger and more independent than any of these people are. Like, right, Tucker Carlson, if he didn't have a network behind him, what's he going to do? And I, 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 and I, I enjoy watching Tucker Carlson, right? But he's got an entire freaking team of people, hundreds of people on his team to put this whole thing together. Rogan, it's like Rogan and Jamie, you know? So that is, you know, I think that really rubs a lot of people in that old media establishment the wrong way. They don't like it at all. And it just, it causes, you know, some, even some, like, like it was bursting out of Tucker's skin the other day. Uh, LG00 says Collins should go back to law school. She's got an effective line of questions in quick succession, pressing forward on her own boss. She essentially made him plead the fifth. I know she was great. I was like, yeah, yes, go, go, go get him. Oh, so you're not going to answer that. I'm not going to answer that line of questioning. So that's a no. Yeah, that's a no lady. Good Lord. I'm your boss. Leave me alone. And so uh, good for her. That was fun. All right. Let's see. Any others coming in here? Yeah, Monster One just shared that link. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, this is too good. I knew it. Uh, so Monster One just shared this. Friday, February 4th. January 6th committee lawmakers are devastated by Jeff Zucker's ouster from CNN. <laughs> uh, four members of the House Select Committee are devastated. Where does this come from? Zucker wrote in a memo during a 90-minute meeting. Okay, where is this coming from? Gangel worked with Zucker, says, in her early days. Okay. <laughs> Committee is made up of seven Democrats. Somebody says, uh, Gangel worked with Zucker. Washington correspondent. Funny. All right, so good stuff. That is from Monster One. And uh, Robute says, I don't buy that Zucker resigned because he had a relationship with Allison. They were both divorced and consensual. The reason why must be because something more nefarious, like something horrible with other people, 
and that relationship is just to cover his butts. KK says, on Ladder with Crowder yesterday, the guy who set up the GoFundMe stated he has gotten crypto wallets, so might be the shift that crypto needed to get the funds where people want them to go. Love that. We've got, uh, so that's great. Yeah, I think crypto is a big solution for a lot of these things. And I, I think that the more they try to clamp down on, you know, uh, freedom of access of, of you know, currency or, or a store of value, the more it's going to accelerate people just jumping into it. Because once you actually start using it, you know, you can realize, yeah, it's, it's, you can transfer money instantly. Like for example, I had to I had to transfer, I had to do a wire transfer the other day. It took like three days to transfer money from one bank account to another. Three days, nonsense. And it's not Zelle or any of these other. Right? It was a, it was a it was a it had to go that way because uh, it was out of country. And I could have done that with with uh, Bitcoin or Solana or Ethereum, not Ethereum, high gas fees right now. But you get the point of this. We've got Super Iron Bob says, Rob, just remember that GoFundMe is totally not a bank. They totally don't store funds and then immediately distribute to the other party. I wonder what if they'll get the SDNY going after them for fraud like they did with Build the Wall Fund. Probably not. Way too much consistency there. Speech Unleashed is here. Hey, Speech says, maybe releasing all of these stories is CNN's way of boosting their viewer numbers. That's true. I mean, a lot more people are watching them than previously, including us. We've got DG McBride says, considering the type of relationship some other CNN staffers are accused of having, Zucker should get a promotion and a raise. One would think a consensual relationship between adults at CNN would be a cause for celebration. Consequently, I'd be willing to be Bet that we don't know the entire Zucker story yet. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. But yeah, right. It's like, it's like they did like 95% of everything right. Divorced, uh, no real conflict of interest because she reports to somebody else. Everybody already knew about it. They just didn't fill out the form. It's like 99% like there. Weird. KK says, I think it's funny that the lefties and the CNN and company are getting what they've dished for four years. On another note, I got a new job. I'm working from home. I was also able to get a new puppy. Just wanted to, just getting used to the new change for the year. Here is a new picture of Louis Oliver. Happy Friday. Let me pull this up. What a handsome boy. He's a real good boy too. I can tell. He, he probably deserves a treat or two just from the look of him. I think he's been a real good boy today. Uh, let's see here. Skipping that one on instructions from grouchy old cat lady. John Delar says, can you please talk about the Republicans censoring of Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger sometime? Also, when are they going to kick Mitt Romney out of the party and sell him into something? So we've got, that's a good question, right? The, I think the RNC came out today and actually scolded Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. What was that for uh, RNC, it was, it was a censure, right, for Liz Cheney. Here is that story. GOP declares. Yeah, here it is. CNN's reporting, speaking of the devils. In a censure of Cheney and Kinzinger, RNC calls the events legitimate political discourse. Yeah, I think a lot of it was. Yeah, a lot of it was. Some of it was not, but a lot of it was. Here it says in a resolution, GOP reps Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger say that they're going after legitimate political conversations. Yeah. All right, and so you can see that's going on. I'll have to take a look at that, but I, of course, queued it up, as you can see. I Am Techie says, the new CEO sounds weak for CNN. Seems like insubordination is okay. It does sound like that, right? Because that Caitlin Collins was getting pretty dang insubordinate. And I Am Techie says, sounds like CNN have a single point of failure, and that is Zucker. Shocking. Right, yeah, and it, it, it is interesting. And you know the other interesting thing about this was that there were rumors that Allison Gallus was actually the second in line, right? She was sort of going to be working her way up. There were, there were rumors that she was going to take over after Zucker left. And so how's that work now if there's all this baggage surrounding that? So they, in other words, they may have lost their number one and their number two simultaneously because now obviously she can't be promoted to that level and uh their other guy is just there uh, gone okay we've got a couple others that was from monster one miss lucky says the guy took your law enforcement interaction training it's a good training three rules in the law enforcement interaction training 
I'll leave you to find those out. Robute says, what GoFundMe did with 10 million bucks is straight up theft. It should be returned, returned to the donors. However, the organizers have been very negligent and should not have used a GoFundMe. Given the malfeasance of them, they should have used Monero. That's from Robute. We've got Greg Marat says, Rob, I wrote my thesis in 2017 on CNN. Very interesting to see what happens behind the scenes. Let me know your email if you want me to forward it to you. Yeah, you can send it right over to me. It's robert at rrlawaz.com. Anybody can email me anytime you want. Send it on over. I'll do my best to answer you. John Delar says, Pence and Romney and the best of the rhinos make me not want to vote for the Republicans. I just might not. I forgot how they are, how they were. Yeah, they're pretty interesting. Yeah, oh, here. Hey, Vienticus is here. We've got a meme that says, I am the evidence, just like Dredd says, I am the law. I am the law. Remember that? And he says, I am the evidence. And so you've got that. So we've got another one from Tweak says, hey, Rob. Hey, I think it's weird that all major networks are pushing the narrative that this announcement about Zucker leaving came out of nowhere. I mean, Zucker only had a contract with CNN that lasted until the end of 2021. And he announced last year that he would not renew the contract. I don't know if his, quote, work is done at CNN and if he's going to ride off into a nice retirement now or if he was kicked into or out due to all the changes that are going on with the with the company. We'll post a link in a second. Well, thank you for that tweak. Yeah, I certainly don't know either. I, if I had to speculate, I would say that, yeah, there's probably a lot more to come. Even Stelter was saying, yeah, there may be more, more coming down the line. Tweak updated that comment. We have an article from, from uh, Business Insider. Wow, this is wild. Okay, so look at this. This is very interesting. So this is from literally one year ago today, February 4th, 2021. One year ago, CNN President Zucker plans to step down at the end of this year. So that would have been at the end of 2021. Obviously, we're not there yet. Or I'm sorry, we're past that yet, right? And that, that obviously didn't happen. So curious. That is weird. So why would they make... So I think Tweak may be saying that they're making much ado about nothing in order to boost their... Uh, viewership numbers? I don't know. Very interesting question. And that, my friends, I believe is it for us for the day. And I want to thank you for all those great questions and your super chat from Zo. Oh my God, this is awesome. LOL. Peas and Butter became a member on our YouTube community, which I very much appreciate. And I want to welcome some new people who signed up over on Locals. We've got K Talking who signed up. We've got C Reed signed up with five E's there in the middle. Dante Picante is here along with True Blue Trucker. We've got It's Alley. We have K Talking along with Short Time Here. Richard's The Real. We've got Lovely Gemini, Wonder Girl 30, C Jones, Dash John, One Tough Chick, Frank MC. We've got Ion Energy, Wild Child, Alaskan for Trump, AZ Gray Man, and Mr. Shields are in the house on YouTube. Once again, Mr. J-Bug, we've got Blue Bunny, we've got Ricky Bishop, Henry Dixon, and Wolfgang Deo. And that, my friends, is it for us for the day. I wanna thank everybody for being a part of the program and for liking and sharing the video with somebody who you wanna invite back to the show because we go live and it is better when there's more people here talking and having some fun and sharing thoughts and opinions. And I'd very much appreciate that. So before you get out of here, I'd really very much appreciate a, uh, a like up, a thumbs up on that button, wherever it is you're watching, because we're going to be back here to do it all again next week. And I need your help so that together we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability, transparency, and justice down upon our system with the hope of finding, well, how does it go? I got to do that again. We're going to come back here on Monday. 4 p.m. Arizona, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. on the East Coast, and for that one Florida man, so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight of accountability, transparency, and justice. I look forward to seeing everybody here on Monday. Have a tremendous weekend, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.